Hello everyone, this is Ian from NYU London, and today we'll be talking about the urban heat island effect and climate change in Abu Dhabi, New York City, and London. As you all know, the urban heat island effect is when a city is significantly warmer in comparison to its surrounding areas because of large amounts of human activity. In New York, the urban heat island is certainly an issue that correlates with climate change. In London, the urban heat island effect varies from day to day, but during peaks after sunset, air temperatures in the warmest parts of the city can be 3 to 4 degrees warmer than outlying rural areas. In Abu Dhabi, global warming and climate change could have serious economic and environmental consequences. Rising temperatures would not only lead to destruction of urban environments due to rising sea levels, but they could also adversely affect coastal and drylands ecosystems. There are many known ways to mitigate heat, the heat island effect and combat climate change. Firstly, we will discuss trees and green spaces which plays an important role in mitigating the urban heat island. Land cover such as trees, grass, or even shrubs has the ability to cool the urban environment. New York City's famous park, Central Park, is an example and also includes the sites uh, such as the Great Lawn and the Jacqueline Kennedy Reservoir. London is also a very green city with large parks such as Hyde Park, Kensington Gardens, Regent's Park, Kew Gardens, and Richmond Park. In Abu Dhabi, Current research states that the urban heat island effect can raise temperatures from 2 to 5 degrees Celsius to 12 degrees Celsius during the night. To mitigate this effect, planting more vegetation to increase evaporation rates is a recommended strategy. Another way to mitigate the heat island is through reflective and light surfaces. Green roofing can be expensive, therefore reflective materials can be used as an alternative. This is also known as cool roofing. As you can see in the graph, the cool roof is significantly cooler than other roofing materials. This is because higher reflectivity, also known as albedo, cor correlates to reduced surface temperatures during the day. Reflective materials do not absorb as much heat during the day, so they do not release as much heat at night. But they can, be noticeably, they can noticeably reduce indoor air temperature without the use of air conditioning. Therefore, therefore reflective building materials can reduce energy consumption. Similar to cool roofs are green roofs. Since rooftops make up about 20 to 25 percent of city surfaces, cities started to convert flat rooftops into vegetated areas with plants, shrubs, and even sometimes trees. Green roofs aim to increase energy efficiency, prolong roof membranes, and reduce stormwater runoff. So, how do these green roofs function and help cool our cities? Most green roofs are created by a growing, by a growing layer averaging 10 centimeters in length that increases the roof's thermal resistance and is then covered with plants. Underneath the soil of the plants is a filter membrane, a drainage layer, and a water repellent layer. As water in the leaves and soil of the plants evaporate, heat transfers to the atmosphere and lowers the nearby temperature. This allows a green roof to be significantly cooler than black rooftops by as much as 20 degrees Celsius on a summer day. Now we will look at the effects of green roofs. Green roofs reflect more sunlight than gravel or tar rooftops. They also act as insulators which reduce energy costs towards cooling buildings. They help lower the air temperature, improve air quality, and add biodiversity to urban areas. Green roofs even affect structures within cities by expanding the lifetime of the building's materials. Besides these green rooftops, we can look at public transportation as another way to reduce emissions. Cars make up 80% of land transport energy use making them the largest contributors of carbon dioxide emissions and greenhouse gas emissions. Alternatives to using cars include trains, buses, cycling, and carpooling. London has an extensive uh, public transportation system in the metro with 11 underground tube lines reaching 270 stations with another line opening in December of 2019. New York City has 21 subway lines and three subway shuttle services that go to 469 stations throughout the different boroughs. Sadly, Abu Dhabi does not have a subway or underground yet. Besides uh, metro systems, buses are also important. According to The Economist, in 2013, 6.4 million people took the bus in London. According to the Metropolitan Transit Authority, about 2.5 million people ride the bus on the average weekday in New York. According to the Department of Municipal Affairs and Transport in 2011, the bus office in Abu Dhabi operates around 650 buses on over 95 service routes catering to more than 50 million passengers. 
Dozens of applications are also being developed for ride-sharing or carpooling in big cities. You can use one of these apps at a lower or split cost on Uber. And sharing a ride lessens environmental impacts of taking an individual car. Finally, active transportation through cycling reduces emissions and, burn, and burning of fossil fuels, and is much healthier for humans. New York City, Abu Dhabi, and London all have accessible public bikes, as you can see here. Finally, another factor to mitigate the heat island is renewable energy. Heating and air conditioning are 50 to 60% of annual energy consumption in residential buildings. As countries develop, the use of air conditioning is growing rapidly due to income growth and the need to protect from high heat exposures. The use of renewable energy solutions are needed to make urban areas more climate resilient. Solar energy is also a solution we can look at to reduce conventional electricity use and reduce peak electric power on hot days. The two main methods of solar energy are solar photovoltaic cells, which are similar to conventional systems, and heat-driven absorption systems, which are liquid desiccant systems. A huge advantage of solar energy is that solar panels can power air conditioning systems, especially in summer months when the sun is more prevalent. Solar energy is also efficient. The efficiency of current solar modules range between 10 and 20 percent in conversion capacity. Solar panel energy, solar panel electricity production could be more than enough power, more than enough to power air conditioning which has the advantage of reducing peak load and associated costs. However, there are barriers to the development of, so of solar cooling systems, such as the different costs that are necessary for energy choices of companies and individuals. On the other hand, the social and material aspects of air conditioning are globalizing at a rapid rate, causing a dependence on cooling. Specific choices and behaviors will directly affect the demand for new cooling technology, such as solar energy. There are also other factors we can look at that mitigate the urban heat island effect. Firstly, the height and spacing of buildings have varying effects in regards to prevailing winds. For example, if buildings are in close proximity with each other, this limits the airflow, which is detrimental since it, is not only, since it not only traps the heated air, but also decelerates cool air to spread within the city, thus hindering heat emission processes. A second factor that can contribute to the UHI are the existence of deep street canyons or a high building height to street width ratio. If this ratio is high, there is a higher likelihood of waste heat that is exhibited from humans. Basically, there's insurmountable amounts of human activity occurring in cities. In regards to these factors, building designs must become more efficient. This includes the proper implementation of strict building codes and regulations. As mentioned previously, the implementation of green infrastructure and or cooling ro cool roofing should be considered to alleviate urban heat island. Most people need to carry the same mindset or else the urban heat island can become detrimental to our climate. In addition, we can modify energy use with new technology. By using new technology, energy use within a city will decrease. And as a result, the city would become cooler and less energy would have to be used to cool buildings. We can also look at policies which can be a powerful tool to mitigate climate change in urban heat islands, especially if the government or different organizations support them. These policies can include building codes, which can be used to ensure environmental sustainability. Next, alternative materials can be used, such as policies that support the use of refrigerants. Renewable energy requirements for buildings or communities can also be set. Emission standards for, say, vehicles can also restrict the amount of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere. Programs that help guide the development of policies to meet certain goals or outcomes is also beneficial. Finally, almost most importantly, each city each has their own respective attempt at special programs. Abu Dhabi has the Estidama program. London has the Green Finance Initiative to help create sustainable projects. And New York has Plan NYC, which is a program that aims to address long-term challenges, including changing climate conditions. So we thank you for listening to our presentation today, and we hope that you enjoyed it. The end, and have a nice day.